Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Inside Pages on Metro Television. My name is Aldo Moro. This is where Ghana listens to. This is where the world, I believe, listens to. Here on Inside Pages, essentially what we do is that we get into the pages of the newspapers. We look out for what we believe is the most topical issue or the most topical issues. We invite the right guests and ask them the relevant uh, questions. My name is Aldo Moro. It's a pleasure having you, uh, having you join us uh, this morning. And I know that um, you've never regretted joining the show. So this morning, we have two very important, as usual, conversations to have. The first one, it's very legal in nature. And some of us who are mere mortals or laymen would attempt to get into um, what appears to be a quicksand. <laughs> but um, we will do our best. Uh, we'll do our best, as we always do on the show. Now, another second one has to do with power crisis. And so we'll start with the first one. On a power crisis matter, it's, um, it's a very simple issue. Yesterday, the Electricity Company of Ghana issued a statement indicating that basically the power crisis are over. That's what the ECG is telling us, that the power crisis are over. And that if you experience any local um, outages, if you experience any outage, it could be due to a local fault. That's what ECG is telling us. Now, this is coming at a time when the PURC, the chairman of the uh, Energy Committee, that's the Honorable Atachia, who will be joining us on the show this morning, and also the, yeah, so the PURC and the, energy, uh, the chairman of the Energy Committee in Parliament, that's the Honorable Samuel Atachia, have made a clarion call on the electricity company of Ghana to come up with a load shedding timetable. But interestingly, the energy minister is dismissing that call and asking Ghanaians to produce their own timetable if they deem it fit. So that's where we are. Now, will the fact that the electricity company of Ghana telling us this morning, in fact, there was a, I will share with you that uh, statement that he issued, telling us that there are over 630 transformers, which they said they are fixing, in some cases they're replacing. Um, the fact that they are done with that maintenance works means that the power crisis are over. You tell me from where you're watching us whether, um, what's the situation in your area, but we're gonna get into this. We'll speak to an energy expert or an energy analyst to tell us whether indeed from where he sits, whether the crisis are over or the ECG and the energy ministry are only papering over the cracks, which is there are some deep seated problems that we're not being told. Now that other angle to this energy conversation is that the PURC, as I did indicate, has actually written to the ECG asking them to provide them with a detailed report on this maintenance works and why we, we keep, we, we keep uh, you know, experiencing these power outages. Now, the deadline was on Wednesday. The report went back, uh, was sent to the PURC, but without a load uh, uh, shedding timetable. We're told there's actually another report which they're expecting on the 2nd of April. So we'll see, whether, we'll see what the PURC's next line of action will be. So that's the whole conversation we intend to have about the energy or the power crisis. Now, with regards to the issue about... The law. The Member of Parliament for uh, South Dai, the Honorable Dapia Makwa, Nelson, uh, that's Nelson Eche Dapia Makwa, went to court and he had two injunctions. One was to ask the court to declare as, as, uh, to declare as unconstitutional the President's decision to reassign ministers whose positions have been appointments have been terminated without recourse to Parliament. He says, it is in flagrant disregard of Article 84, 1 and 2 of the 1992 Constitution. The Attorney General, and of course, that's the first one. And the second one, he filed an interlocutory injunction to the court, asking the court to injunct Parliament from going ahead to vet and approve some of these ministers. On Thursday, the court dismissed that application based on an application of expedited action by the Attorney General through the, registrar, the Registrar's Office to the Chief Justice, asking for a rushed 
right, or to rush the chief justice into looking into the matter. So he applied for an expedition. But he did that on the blind side of the opposing, uh, um, of the opposing party. And I'm talking about the Honorable Member of Parliament for uh, not South Daida, uh, Nelson Dapimopo, and his council. They raised some serious concerns about that. They're saying what, did, what the Attorney General did was wrong, even in law and administratively. Now, we're going to get into that and ask the first question. Did the Attorney General err, or what he did is perfectly understandable, it's perfectly normal? So that's where the debate is. And more importantly, now that the road has been cleared, what is Parliament going to do? Are they going to recall? Remember, Parliament is in session. The Parliament is on recess. Are they going to re recall the members and uh, get these ministers to approve them and so on? So what would that mean? We'll get some legal uh, understanding of that as well. But also remember that the NDC has raised some grave reservations about the posture of the Chief Justice, that the Chief Justice shuttling of court cases is very problematic. I'll also tell you why the NDC has issues with that. So these are the two issues that we intend to look at. But first, let's start with the issue of the energy crisis. And Derek, if the ECG statement is ready, if we can show it on TV, uh, we can put it on TV and then read it for or read it to the attention of our listening public. But we'll take a break. When, we come, when I come back from the break, I'll introduce my resource persons, and then we'll read the ECG statement, and then... We'll, take, we'll start the conversation. Stay tuned in. No mother who has lost a baby will have a reason to lie that my baby is not dead or my baby is dead because there was doom so. Come on, oh, show wait, some wait. candor, show some sensitivity, <laughs> show some respect. It is indisputable that we are in doom so. The regulator says we are in doom so. That is PULC finish. All doom so be doom so. What responsible governments are supposed to do for their citizens is to give them a low shedding timetable so that at least they can plan their lives because electricity is an essential commodity for the operations of individuals, businesses, and institutions, including hospitals. Lives are at stake here. And so it is an insult to the sensibilities and intelligence of Guineans for a minister of state, our employee who we pay with our taxes, to tell us that if we need a low shedding timetable, we should bring our own. What kind of insult is this? What kind of impudence and arrogance is this? The regulator has directed you, giving you a deadline by 2nd April to publish a timetable. Are you saying that they are all NDC people at PULC? Are you saying that they are all being partisan? They don't know what they are talking about? This problem has lingered on for a long time. And like you said, it's a financial problem owing to the mismanagement of the power it sector by this government. <laughs> but whatever the problem is, Ghanaians want the problem fixed. Mm. And in the time being, Ghanaians want honesty on the part of their leaders, sensitivity, and some respect. Mm. And by respect, I mean publish a low shedding timetable. If you, as Richard Ahiyagba, cannot support this simple, patriotic, commonsensical demand, mm. then all the things you come here to talk about, that we should be nationalistic and all that, is all hogwash. And the last I checked, uh, Kosovo was down. These are issues that started this year, uh, January, February, um, toward March. They had a number of their uh, plants down, including, uh, I think, uh, the Tico was down, I understood. Uh, Kosumbo is that I think I have a list of them here. But generally, it's an issue to do with uh, technical uh, challenges um, that they are dealing with as a matter of fact. Yes, so I think in January or so, Kosumbo number one was down. Tico, uh, Kosumbo that produced about 160. Um, Tico, 110. Send power, 350. We, number three, I think was down for uh, plant maintenance. The Twin City also down for plant maintenance. So there's general uh, difficulty through um, uh, the power generating companies in making sure they are producing because those maintenance are necessary and then the, the unplanned uh, equipment going down also is a factor uh, that is of uh, you know, limiting capacity and ensuring that we don't have enough power to go around. So these technical issues, my understanding, I think the last I spoke with the, as a two Saturdays ago, 
I spoke uh, with the authorities or people in, who are uh, within the space um, told me that they are coming along with a solution and so therefore uh, the matter would actually be resolved very quickly. And you have seen some improvement in the situation. In fact, the ECG uh, was indicated to me in a conversation that they had to fly in engineers to help bring those uh, equipment back. But you see, people are moving to make it about timetable. But the thing is about fixing a problem. So we shouldn't so, plan no, our no, lives. No, 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 I'm saying that. I know you can plan your life and we must plan our lives. But I'm saying to make it about that, to create the impression that we are in, uh, you know, doom so era in the sense that we don't have generation capacity. It's not it, what I just is told you happening. that when the That's minister the announced doom CSA three weeks, ECG gave us a timetable. I'm, I'm, same not, government. I'm, I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing that. All I'm trying to let you know is that the problem we have is yes. not a problem of lack of generation. It's a mechanical no, issue. Doesn't matter that is being whether it's generation, whether it's financial, see, whether it's this. See, I don't have power. Yeah energy sector the current power cuts some people are saying that you made mention of this you use this as a campaign against john mahama and now we're experiencing worse a worse situation under under um president akofuado would it reflect in the 2024 election would it be um something that people will stand on to vote if you are comparing four years four years mpp administration energy sector is 300 times better than john mahama and we are still experiencing doom so nobody has said we have it i'm just saying it's far much better than your mama ever did you do admit that there's doom so that is the word you used i have never used that word i promised you that we are going to work on it and it's not a work that is a single event it's a process and we'll continue to work on it for the energy sector to become better have you heard of calls for a timetable those who want it to bring it they should bring the timetable if there, if there is I, have, I haven't seen any timetable so when my people are calling for it say bring a timetable what do you mean the ecg says that there's no all right so that was the energy minister interacting with a joy fm reporter i want to say i want to give credit to joy fm for that um, for that tape let me introduce my resource persons this morning, and I have the Honorable Alex Segbefia, um, very, very um, hard-working member of the NDC, who's made time of his very busy schedule to join us. We're grateful for that, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Your microphone is actually off, if you can switch it on. Sure. Yes, it's on now. It's on now. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Let me also say that I have Nanam Wesi, um, the, the seventh, who is the executive director for the Institute of Energy Security. I'll start with him um, for would we'll have about 10 to 15 minutes conversation because he has um, a coronation uh, program to attend. So I'm just wondering, um, Nanam Wesi, before you, we proceed with the conversation, what is that big event that's coming off um, this morning? Yes, so... Um I am currently in Ekunfia Abor, and um, we are installing our uh, Tufu, Tufu Hima, um, that is to say the leader of the Asafo, Asafo Company, okay. the queen mother of that uh, Asafo Company is the one we are installing today. Then also, um, uh, Nkoso Hima is also leading another part. So it's a whole lot of uh, things we are doing here this morning at Ekunfia Abor. Oh, then that's a very, very busy day. It's a very significant, a very important day for you, isn't it? Exactly the case. But I have to spare some of my time to attend to national issues. That's why I agreed to join you this morning of before which, we start a program at 8.30. Right, of which we're most grateful. So it's 19 minutes past eight. Let's try and squeeze this in between your very busy schedule. So let's do this. Now, I'll start with this. So the EC, ECG has issued a statement and... Essentially, what they're asking us to do is that we can go and sleep. We don't have any problems anymore. Now, it says that um, the Electricity Company of Ghana wishes to inform our cherished customers and the general public that we have a stable national power supply, um, which is a stable national grid. And it says any customer who is currently experiencing power outage is due to a localized fault. 
And it says, please call our, you know, um, contact center on 03 blah, 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 for immediate action to fix the outages and restore power supply. And it says, we're sorry for the inconvenience. We wish you a happy Easter. Essentially, what they're telling, telling us is that the problems that occasioned or the factors that occasioned the power crisis we've been experiencing the last few years, in the last few weeks, have been, have been dealt with. It's been resolved. Is that the same information you also have? Is that the same sense you also get? Uh, thanks for having me more this morning once again. And uh, I would have wished that you also put out some of your statements relative to glucose outages from the same ECG sure. that uh, is telling us that um, if there are box of life points that they, they have to receive power from, um, and uh, that is managed by Greco, and for each box of life points, or numerous of them, um, there are outages. It means that power is not flowing through those box supply points. And so um, they are able to produce power to some areas. Before we finish our discussion, I want you to put that one to out there for our viewers and listeners. Fair enough. But tomorrow, um, we, 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 whichever team is managing the PR department of uh, ECG, is doing the company a disservice. You see a lot of inconsistency in their communication. Um, at one breath, a 630 transformers being overloaded, hence will um, probably have to trigger uh, one fuse or one conductor or the other that may result in outages in some local areas. 630. And then we, you wonder whether all the 630 um, transformers got overloaded overnight and uh, there was no you know, plan for all that to maintain and upgrade in order to um, be able to contain the amount of power that will go through that. But let's come back to the statement. You see, these, if you say ECG, um, it's assuring consumers that there is a stable uh, national power supply into brackets, a stable national grid. Um, Moreau, I think the ECG want to confuse Ghanaians. If they don't want to confuse Ghanaians, then probably they are confused themselves. They must not equate a stable national power supply to a stable national grid. The two are different, Moro. A stable national power supply typically will refer to consistent availability of power or electricity to consumers from various sources, from uh, uh, power plants, from renewable energy sources, and all that. Right. It's indicated that there is minimal interruption or outages in terms of electricity supply to consumers. Will you say, based on this definition, will you say that the ECG has a stable national power supply? Are you not seeing disruption in your system? Are you not seeing power outages? More, are you not seeing low shedding? All right, this is power, uh, you know, uh, power supply uh, stability. Now let's go to the grid. If you say there's a stable national grid, of which you want to equate that to the stable national power supply, it's not the case. Mm. A stable national grid will typically also refer to the infrastructure or the network that a distributor or a transmitter of power will use to move the, the power to the receiving ends. If it's a distributor, then I mean uh, to consumers. And this grid may involve some substation some transformers and all that. This is a great matter. Right. And so a stable grid is different from stable electricity supply. They must not confuse the two. And so um, we at IES believe that what the UCG is now churning out is another diversionary tactics mm. and something to also... Um, assure Ghanaians that everything is okay. Meanwhile, we know that uh, everything is not okay. The ECG knows that everything is not okay. 
Moreover, from the beginning of this year, right from January, let me use just January, up to yesterday, the amount of power produced from the entire power system hasn't been more than 3,300 megawatts. Meanwhile, our peak demand between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. is roughly 3,700 megawatts. And so if yesterday they produced our 3,300 megawatts and our peak demand is 3,700 roughly, that means that there is a shortfall of 400 megawatts. Right. That shortfall must be managed by load shedding. If they don't shed load and they're forced to put out all the three... Uh, uh, 3,300 for all the consumers, there will be either a brownout or a blackout because it's not enough to serve our load. Hence, some section of consumers will have some power and others will not have power. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. If you go back to Grisco's own statement, the last two days and yesterday, reference to Grisco, they are saying that, look, Grisco is not giving us enough power for us to distribute. That's why we are shedding load. If you read the statement from Pool, the ECG or the, the utilities, um, uh, you know, uh, workers union, last two days they issued a statement in defense of ECG. True. And they were clear in the statement yeah. that the power they received from Grico is not enough right. to cover all our demand. And so if you come and tell us today that there's a stable power supply and that there is no outages, there are no disruptions. I'm sure that um, the Ghanaian also have a different experience, and this is one of the experiences that I'm sharing as a Ghanaian and a consumer. Now, now, why do you think that the ECG has been very economical with the truth? I mean, if you read the report and the response to the PURC based on the directives that were issued by the PURC to give it a comprehensive report on what's been happening with the past sector, they still are not able to tell um, clearly and categorically and specifically to PURC that we have a generation shortfall. We have a generation deficit. Why do you think they're being economical with the truth? It has to take the Public work Utilities Workers Union to come out and say that, look, this is nothing to do with you know, um, the transformers, over 630 transformers that we are servicing, some of which we are doing infilling, and that we have a generation deficit. That's the problem, as you yourself um, attested in that submission you just made. Why, why, why do you think the ECG is doing this? The, the ECG, unfortunately, is being used to, um, you know, uh, to clear all the doubts in the system. Ordinarily, ECG will not issue a statement or must not issue a statement without referencing what is happening in the trans on the transmission grid. Um, normally, you will see Greco issue a statement and say that we have a challenge with this box of five points, and uh, so Ghanaians must bear with us. Then the ECG will come and say, yes, but on the back of Greco's uh, pronouncement or release, we are unable to service every consumer, and that's what's happened. That's what's happened all the time. Unfortunately, uh, we are not seeing today. Greco is not uh, talking. Uh, you don't get the energy minister come clear. And the first time the energy minister spoke relative to the low shedding we are still seeing or doom so was last week. And it was blunt, and it was so cl clear in his, in his mind that ECG will not provide any timetable. And that anybody who is asking for a timetable must provide one himself. It shows clearly that it is the energy minister that is preventing the ECG from putting out a timetable. The energy minister is you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 constraining them from doing their work. And to the point that it could even insult the PRC, a whole regulator of the power sector, to say that if you need a timetable, provide one yourself. Because it was the PRC that made a public pronouncement that ECG give consumers a timetable. And then the minister says it's not coming out. Unfortunately, for politicians, 
giving out a load shedding timetable um, means there is doom so. And so the womb should, shouldn't be one. But uh, moral, uh, I think it's just common sense that you don't control the amount of power that you sell to your consumers. Somebody give you the power. And so the amount they give to you, the people that you can service them, you service them. Hello? What I, th I think it was. The data is that you cannot see Adim. All right, please go ahead. Mara, do you get me? I can, I can hear you. I Good. can hear you, sir. So you, you give them an indication of your difficulty for meeting their need, and so you give them a timetable to plan their life. But that is not the case because the energy minister, and we're putting it bluntly once again from the decks of IES, is preventing the ECG from putting out the timetable. Well, the energy minister says, those of you who are calling for a timetable or a load shedding um, or a load shedding management timetable would have to produce your own load shedding timetable because he's not, he, doesn't, he doesn't approve of it. He doesn't agree that we, we need a load shedding timetable. In fact, in that interview, he dismisses the fact that we're having doom saw. What do you make of what the energy minister said? I, I think I've, I've laid this bay. Um, one, um, Dumso, it's not for the energy minister to define. It's the experience of consumers, what they go through, they share their experience. And consumers uh, are saying that we are not getting power as and when we need it. And that's, let me use myself as an example, a prepaid consumer of ECG, meaning that I've paid for the power. And if I check my credits, I have more than 406 credits on my, on my meter. Paid about two weeks ago. So you have my money in your pockets and you are not giving me power. I live in home and within the enclave of home, trust me, ask every resident of home. At the height of 2014, 2015, 2016, June, so home, we experienced maybe just one outage. In one month, once in one month, today is a daily occurrence at home. And uh, in, in about 48 hours, I will lose power for almost 12 hours. That's a quarter of my life in two days without uh, electricity. Hmm. And so I say I'm experiencing doom so because my light doom, and I don't know when it comes, and once in a while, it's so. And it's consistent. But then if that says, there is no doom so. All right. I'm sure it's living somewhere and not in Ghana. A statement that there shouldn't be any, we shouldn't expect any timetable. And that if Moron is one, go and produce one yourself. If Nanam Wesi need a timetable, Nanam Wesi should go and draw a timetable and paste it on his wall. If the PRC is asking for a timetable, the PRC should churn out one itself. And like I said, the energy minister is restraining the ECG from putting out them that timetable. And if you listen to Pooh, they were clear in their statement that Greco should come and tell everybody how much power he gives to every box of life points or to ECG. Based on that, they also issue the timetable. Mm. And so don't expect any timetable anytime soon until the minister removes his foot off the paddle and until Greco indicates in public to ECG that I am unable to give you that bulk for them that every consumer would need. And now, my penultimate question to you, because I know you have to attend to your coronation program. Um, now, you, you insist, I want to believe, based on everything you said, that a timetable, a load shedding timetable, is imminent. It has to happen. <laughs> Despite the fact that we fixed, we, we have, we're done fixing our transformers, we have serviced them, and, and we're good to go. You're still insisting that we need a load shedding timetable. Is, is that it? ESTG can service every transformer, conductor, and let's say they have a, a, a robust uh, transmission or distribution grid. They have everything right. Let's assume so. That's dealing with the 630 overloaders, transformers, means that there's a stable grid. Let's assume so. However, the ECG 
we require more than 3,400 uh, uh, to meet the demand of local customers. Greco, the amount of power given to them by Greco is less than 3,000. And so they have to share some load. And so some parts have to do, then some parts have to stop. And so whether the issue is solved from uh, usages end or not, there will still be power outages. Let me even reserve the word so and use the word uh, uh, power outages. We'll still have it. Now, now you're saying that, in fact, your record to have said that this doom saw thing is going to linger on for a very long time. And please explain what you mean by that. Someone will come and say it's a technical challenge. From where we sit, it's a financial problem. You know, in the power sector, what oils and lubricates the entire sector and makes sure that it's functioning efficiently is liquidity. Anytime you have a liquidity challenge, then of course you you must expect that the power system will suffer. One, somebody supply the fuel, the person must be paid. Somebody uh, transmit the fuel, what pool? Natural gas once in a while, and must be paid for the transmission of same. Somebody uh, uh, you know generate the power, IPPs involved. And we hear them sometimes come and say, government owes them, so they will shut down. That is clear. Somebody transmits and must maintain that system that's used for transmission. And somebody distributes mm. and must maintain the distribution grid. If the amount of revenue raised at the end of the day is not enough to cover all the costs incurred in the value chain I've just spelled out, it means that there will be challenges. If we don't pay the fuel supplier, of which we have the same challenge today, um, they will be unwilling to supply the fuel. That's why you find some power plants idle and not being dispatched. ECG will come and tell the 630 uh, 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 transformers are down. Granted, is the case. It's the case because they are not getting enough money to upgrade the system and maintain the system to be robust. Same with transmission. Mm -hmm. WAPCO will come and tell you, since the beginning of last year, how many times have WAPCO threatened us and closed their valve, restricting the flow of natural gas to power producers. It's all financial. Let's thank God for the hydro section of the power plants or the power generation system. Akosombo is generating very well. Let's nobody lie to you that there's Penka H at Akosombo. All the systems are running and they are producing more than 900 megawatts. We is producing, oil is producing, they are sustaining us. Senate is down, Amandi is down, C3 is down, Ameri is down, about six power plants, thermal, are all down. Why? Some uh -huh. don't have fuel, and some could not do their plant maintenance for financial reasons, and that's they are down. This is the bare fact. Okay. And so any technical hitch. Is induced by financial constraints okay. and illiquidity. All right. Any fuel supply restriction is induced by inability to pay and not paying promptly as okay. and when we need it. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Nana Mwisi, um, the, the seventh is executive director of the Institute of Energy Security. Uh, let me now quickly speak to the Honorable Samuel Atacha, who is the chairman of the um, uh, chairperson of the Energy and Mind, Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament. Uh, he's also been following with rapt attention what's been happening within the past sector. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for joining us on Inside Page. It's a pleasure having you, sir. The same here. The same here. All right. Now, Honorable, um, so from, from where you sit, I'm, I'm sure based on your own research, based on the, a few calls you've made or some calls you've made, uh, trying to follow up both as a consumer and also as the chairperson of the Mines and Energy Committee. What have you been gathering as being the cause of the intermittent power outages that we're facing? And what steps have you taken so far in getting to the bottom of it? Well, I think um, the gentleman who spoke previously uh, has summarized everything, you know. So it's a value chain crisis. And we should say, you should see it as such. If we're not careful, then the distributor, he, if uh, ECG will be the, the end of our jokes. You know. So what is going on here is very simple, that 
a very serious component of um, electricity uh, production, which is a uh, um, uh, um, gas, and then as well as um, um, uh, um, uh, fuel. I mean, it, it's sometimes a challenge. The people produce the power, the independent power producers. I also go through some crisis sometimes in terms of maintenance and essentially uh, underpayments coming from uh, um, the distributor. And the distributor um, um, has a problem for the simple reason that the analysis are showing that he's going through about uh, more than 30% losses in terms of what is, I mean, uh, distributed and the returns. That is a fairly serious trouble that the distributor is going through. So when you look at all these matters, and the fact that we don't have a buffer of um, 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 uh, uh, fuel, which is a necessary raw material for power generation, or we've not also had the, the good sense of saying, that, look, why don't we buy the fuel, which is non-negotiable if you want to generate um, electricity. Let's buy enough stock so that at the end of the day, as we are, as, as we are selling the um, electricity and recouping some money, I mean, we'll just ensure that we buy some more fuel so that we never run out of fuel. So this is, a, I mean, the cocktail of troubles that have um, undermined electricity generation currently. But it is not a hopeless situation. If we pay regard to the fact that we need power and electricity for the economy to take, then every money should be found in this situation uh, so that uh, I mean we don't we don't get into um, a very terrible situation of uh, a permanent um, doom so challenge. So this is how I see it for now. But what is very critical is that we are going to bring all the um, uh, players in the value chain uh, to Parliament for an interrogation, and then we'll be able to um, see the problems from all the dimensions. And then we come out with some strong suggestions to um, uh, uh, the government. But I'm tempted to believe that the government is actually aware of what is going on. And everything is uh, being done to ensure that the nation will not plan into the um, old doomsday situation. Sorry, yeah. my understanding is that um, you had attempted to invite the guys in the in the value chain, I'm talking about ECG, Gridco, and some of the uh, power producers to appear before um, your committee to explain to your committee what exactly is happening. But there was an intervention by the energy minister who said he was out of town and so on and so forth. What What is the story there? Yes. You see, half the time, if you are not careful, you'll be fed with ignorance. So uh, we were trying to get the... Uh, um, the players in the value chain to be seated before parliament and they will swear them in and they'll begin to interrogate the matters. But because the minister said it's a very sensitive matter for his ministry, was craving the indulgence of the committee uh, uh, to have it adjourned until it returns into Ghana. And when, when it's returned, then we can convey it. He wants to sit in the meeting. In all fairness, that is a very, I mean, uh, wise uh, request that he made. And I didn't see that we should turn it down because at the end of the day, we'll be able to um, superintend over the matters properly and the back stops with him. So very soon, he's here in Ghana now. He's going to converge and then we, we listen to all the issues uh, from the key players in the value chain. Okay, and, and you're saying that that is very soon. How soon are we looking at? Um, next week, next two weeks, next three weeks? Uh, we, we want to do it next week because, you see, we don't want to sit down and just say that, oh, um, we have some challenges and we should be idle. You know, although we are recessed, it behoves the committee to be working because what is happening is critical and we can't delay any longer in interrogating the matter. Mm. Well, it may be late in the day. It may not necessarily be a useful exercise because ECG has just issued a statement asking Ghanaians um, or informing Ghanaians to now take it easy because the problem has been resolved. We, we have now a stable power grid. 
um, and that the in transformers over 630 or so which were being fixed or being maintained have they are done with that and so we shouldn't have any problem with with power outages but even if you do have a power outage problem it could be due to a localized fault so would you still base or after what the ECG has said still be interested in inviting everybody to the table for a conversation on what's happening what the way forward is very much so because the question will be posed why didn't you anticipate this trouble? Mm. How, what, what was your sense of the future? You know, why should you be running an ambulance situation? So these are matters that are very critical. So that sometimes we prompt them onto good work. We don't sit down there and then uh, we're having a challenge in this critical moment of the year. So as for the interrogation, no matter how you say it, it has to be done and they'll be able to I mean, I plot all the mess and see how we shouldn't repeat it. It is, it is imperative that we meet, I mean, the, the stakeholders in the value chain. Finally, your record to have joined the, the bandwagon of persons who are asking for a timetable so that we can properly organize our, organize our lives and plan our lives. Why do you agree with those who say that we need a timetable? A low shedding timetable, I mean. Yeah, so, so you don't give the consumer of uh, electricity a shabby treatment. You see, we have, a, we have a problem, and people should plan their lives. It's very important. I'm sure if I own your clothes in the, in the studio, yes, and probably uh, if you understood that where you live, this is the time that you won't have power. You, you, you iron your clothes in advance. You know, people might have stuff in their fridges, and the rest of it, they might go bad. Do I cook quickly to save the trouble of getting my, myself going bad? You see, so we'll plan with the timetable in terms of our lives. I don't think anybody will be asking for too much if, I mean, he knows in advance that there will be power outage, and therefore this is what I should do. Even if there's a power outage, I'm, I, my life will not be in a mess. So, so I, I believe it is eminently sensible that the timetable should be out there. People will plan their lives around the timetable. And I'm also praying that uh, uh, this, this matter will be out of the way so that we won't have this conversation and be looking at more serious matters of the economy. Well, your, your colleague, uh, who is the main Shia South Member of Parliament and the Energy Minister, thinks otherwise. He says anybody who thinks that you know, they need a timetable, should produce their own timetable because he doesn't believe that, you know, he doesn't think that we need a timetable. You, you clearly don't agree with him based on what you're saying. Yes, I, I, I've said it, you know, but I don't know the context of all that, but I've said that um, that would be very unfortunate, and I want to repeat it. I mean, I mean it's critical that uh, we don't joke with electricity, you know, and I've said that when it comes to electricity, it doesn't work practically. We should bear in mind that everybody consumes electricity. And that is, if you like, <laughs> it's becoming like a, the oxygen of life in some sense. So, so I don't know the full context of what is said, but the timetable is eminently sensible for the planning of life and how things should be done. If even you have a, 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 um, a generator in your house, then you know that, oh, this time of the year, or, or this time of the day, I won't have power. So why don't I go and buy diesel? So it's like, it's at the centrality of how we organize our lives. I don't have the full context, but uh, I, I don't know why. I mean, he asserted so. And I, I still want to say it is unfortunate. But it will be remedied. All right. It will be remedied. Okay. All right, Honorable, thank you very much for accepting to talk to us this morning. It's, a, it was a, it's actually a pleasure talking to you, sir. My joy as always. Thank you. That's the Honorable Samuel Atacha, who's the uh, chairperson of the Energy uh, Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, uh, telling us what this committee intends to do in the midst of what appears to be a challenge with the power, uh, power supply. He's told us that next week he will be inviting uh, the MD for ECG, the, um, the manager of Great Co, and also the manager of... Um, uh, VRA and all the other guys who are in the whole energy supply chain to appear before his committee to explain to the committee what exactly is happening and what the way forward is. So you heard it right here.
on Metro TV. So this is breaking news for you. But he's also condemned the energy minister. He said it's unfortunate what the energy minister has said about produce your own timetable because that is wrong. We need to plan our lives. And Ghanaians asking for a timetable is well within our right. And it's actually a valid, a legitimate call. That's according to the Honorable Atachia. Now, come back in studio and um, speak to the Honorable um, Alex um, Sebefia, who is the um, Director of International Relations of the NDC. Today, we're going to be doing a one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on this topic and also the next topic. There'll be others who will be joining us via Zoom and on phone at some point. So, I don't want anybody saying that, well, why are you only hosting the NDC? <laughs> you, just, you just heard me talk to Atachia. And also, on the matter of, on the, matter of the Supreme Court matter, there's a man... Uh, who will be joining us from the Attorney General's um, um, uh, office and who will be speaking to us as well. It's 0249-155-646-0249, sorry, 155646. Now, that's the WhatsApp line for those of you who would want to contribute to the show. It's 0249-155-646. So join the discussion uh, with your comments on this number. Tell us, what's the... What's the past situation in your area? I'm very curious. I want to know, yeah? What's the past situation in your area? ECG says they have fixed the problem. And so if you have, you know, a couple of, you know, parties here and there, one hour, two hours, it's because of a localized force. Do you agree with them? Share your experiences. Honorable Alexa Bufia, um, the minority in parliament has actually had a cause to issue a statement asking again reminding the ECG to come up with a line with a timetable especially and then also uh, focus more on institutions that institutions that are into health delivery you know following what has happened at the Tama general hospital you want to throw a, a, a light on that or do you have something you want to say preliminary comment before you speak to the statement first and foremost good morning to you and good morning to your viewers and listeners right and equally importantly good morning to nana and we see the seventh Right. And uh, my Attachia. colleague, Atachia, uh, Honorable. Uh, there's an adage which says that water is life. Right. If that adage is correct, then energy is survival. And uh, going straight to the issue of the hospitals, right. um, when we all watched or saw uh, what was happening with children in incubators, etc., as a result of a lack of load shedding, uh, or even whether there should even be load shedding in areas where there are hospitals, mm. it, it, it really brought a lot of concern to a number of us, more especially since I've been health minister before. Right. Um, I could actually understand. And the very least one would have expected would have been a demonstration of empathy from the Minister of Energy. I think his statements were putting it mildly unfortunate. They showed no a complete disregard for what people are really going through, a complete disregard for his role as a minister in all this. Mm. And as Nanai Mwesi actually pointed out, it seems he's the one who has decided for the basis simply of, and I put it in this way, ego of the MPP, not to ever have been, for someone to be able to say there was doing so. Mm. It's a political issue. Yeah, but, if, but releasing a timetable then makes it official, doesn't it? That is why they will not release a timetable. So you understand? I mean, you're a politician. Yes, but it that. is wrong. Why? Because we, have, we are politicians. Didn't we do so? Yes, you did. So what, 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 is, there's no crime. And you paid a price for it. We, well, they don't every, want to pay a price for that. They are going to pay the price one way or the other. Right. MPP are on their way out. Okay. They're just making matters worse. So that for me is not the issue. Okay. But why should we suffer as a result? Why should, should people in hospitals and why should, why should we suffer? What, how callous can you get? Mm. Just give us a timetable. Up until two days ago, there was, I don't know about yesterday, I didn't go to an area, but I'm sure if you get the phone calls, people would have been ex in ex experiencing doing so. Now, the maximum output of plants right. in Ghana is in the region of about 5,134 megawatts. That's if you take plants, installations, uh, independent power suppliers, Akosumbo, everything. 
But the dependable capacity mm -hmm. is actually about 4,710. Okay. Okay. Let me give a margin of uh, amounts that are needed as uh, electricity you create in case of emergencies or whatnot. So let me even remove two or 300 megawatts from that and say that we are about 4,500, 4,400. You've heard from an expert who is telling us that. At the moment, we are only producing 3,300. Right. Out of this 4,500 that we could produce. So ab initio. Ab initio from the beginning. There's a deficit. There's a deficit. And it's big. And it's huge. So what it means is that there are, there are areas today that are not getting power because it's been shared. Look, you have to then ask yourself, yes. what was the meaning of NDC have created too much excess power? What was the meaning of that? Right. Because you are only able to produce 3,300 at peak time of the current power plants in the country, which are 4,500, 4,700, uh, if you just use the... Uh, uh, dependable capacity. So, this shortfall, you just have to go to each power uh, company and say, and he gave a, this thing, Asogli, how much are you producing? Mm. Uh, this group, how much are you producing? And, and you find out that, as he said, some mm. are not producing because they don't have money to buy fuel. Meaning that... It's it, a money issue. It's a money issue. Yes. And you see... When even they talk about, oh, contracts that were signed, they, in the last seven years, have also signed similar and different contracts. They've even moved stuff that uh, John Mahama brought in to Kumasi. True. Uh, uh, Ameriplan. Ameriplan. Is in Kumasi. So you cannot fault the NDC for what it did. Now yours is to buy fuel and make these plants run. It was also us who created Esla Fund. So somebody come and explain how has this extra fund been helping to reduce the debt of the energy sector? And why haven't we looked rather to be increasing it instead of thinking of COVID fund? Right. So you have a mismanagement issue. Any way you look at it, you toss and turn it. With ego problems attached to it, we are, in do, we are, we are, we are finished. I mean, why in heaven's name won't you just tell us that? Look, in my hometown, we have a freezer. We put meat in it for a function we are supposed to have. The meat is spot. Yeah. The and meat is gone. No, so we are going to buy again. Nobody's going to compensate. No, you no it's gone. And this is just me as an example. How many people cannot come and tell you a story that my child died or I had a problem. Mm. My child is now disabled because there was no oxygen to their brain or whatever. Yeah. How many people? Yeah. But they, we, we, we have to suffer in silence. And the least we could have expected was a show of empathy from the minister. So I must commend Honorable Atachia because he's, he, he's been candid. Right. He has not attacked his colleague, mm. but he says, I don't necessarily agree. But he's been fairly patriotic and exactly. nationalistic. Yeah. And that is the, what we want to see. But this attitude of our uh, uh, energy minister is mm. unfortunate. Right. And, and, and it... I've given you breakdown of figures. In this country, we then had uh, uh, our brother who was with uh, 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 Sami Jemfi. Right. Uh, 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 Richard. Richard. Yeah, walking us through the number of plans that Giving us down. issues about Akosombo yes. and this and that. Tiku so, taku. Uh, uh, but at no point has anybody said some of these plants can't run because we haven't paid them. He just said his maintenance works. In fact, he went to the extent of saying that there are some technical guys who have been imported into this country to help fix those plants. We were talking... You say it's not true? It, it, it cannot be true. Why? People can come and do maintenance. But is it the maintenance that has created a problem? In any event, there's a timetable for maintenance of all these plants. Have they kept to the timetable? If you're supposed to maintain something in March and you wait to November, it will break down in September. You have a problem. So even that is questionable. Right. What is the maintenance culture? How much money have they paid people to maintain their plants? 
So I guess at, it, as of 2023, we were owing one point. I think it was about one point seven. Uh, one point. Uh, I think one point three or so. Uh, one point seven billion. Billion. Yes, in dollars. In dollars. To the IPPs. To the IPPs. Yes. That's a lot so, of so, money. So that's the outstanding debt in the energy sector. So we in NDC are watching it closely because we know we are coming to inherit this. And we just know that we have a leader in your mama who can fix these things because he has done so before. Now people will at least understand him a bit. Because this is, we are just going from one bad situation. Look, let's go historical. Collection of money by ECG, it was a PDS that was coming to solve this mm. problem. We lost... A hundred and ninety million dollars when the U.S. pulled out of the PDS deal because we could not sort it out. That is part of the problem we are facing today. Any way you look at it, there has been total failure management-wise. Right. So, look, there's doom so. Call it what you like. Load, uh, what's it called? Power outages, etc. There's doom so. And if they haven't found some miraculous money from somewhere and decide, for example, that they won't pay any people their bonds, they would not, because their pot is the same, mm -hmm. or they get some uh, loan or grant from somewhere to just go and pay IPPs for them to then give us power. We are going to have the doom saw because that is the bottom line. They have stretched. The power IPPs, the power producers, have stretched. Akosombo should not be a problem because we've just had a spillage. In the past, the reason we were having problems with doom saw was that in the, term, in, in the hydro sector, we didn't have enough water on a six, seven year cycle where the, the, the rains mean that you don't get it. We don't have that problem. Now we are looking at spillage because the, the rainfall has been too much. So yeah. the water behind the dam is more than enough. Mm -hmm. We don't have that problem. We may have problems with the machine, but, uh, maintenance, but that's a different aspect. Right. Maintenance costs money. Mm -hmm. Why are, everything you look at in this country is because the money has been dissipated. It hasn't been planned properly. They haven't used it well. And that is the problem we are facing. So it's historical. Right. We are only suffering what incompetence has created for us today. And the MPP, we can't wait for December because there must be a paradigm shift. And if you have the energy minister speaking the way he is speaking mm. in a crisis like this, then uh, there is no need, there's no even, you can tell that the MPP have no remorse or cannot even uh, actualize what they have put this country into. We are all suffering it. Petrol prices are going up again. Yeah. All manner of things are happening. People haven't been paid on their bonds, et cetera, that have been put together. So, look, we are in a bad place. Right. And Dumso is real and is live. And people have really gone through a lot in the last couple of weeks, month, it's been bad. And I, I think that your former speakers have said more than I want to add mm. at this stage. But there, there, there is a lot. I was happy he was able to even talk about stable uh, national grid as opposed to a station, stable national power supply yeah. and, and stuff like that. Because then he breaks it down for the intellectuals who want to get into that to, to understand that this is uh, where we are. Mm. But the bottom line is that it's a money issue. Right. And unless we are going to rob Peter to pay Paul, and that is, is possible, mm. it means something elsewhere is going to suffer for it. But we are talking of huge amounts of money. It's not a joke. And it's not a joke. And the MPP government under President Nana Adu and Baumia have actually disappointed Ghanaians big time. They've now taken us back to a matter that mm. had been resolved. Do you agree with those? Now, let's talk about some of the mm. steps that state institutions have taken in order to get to the bottom of this. So let's talk about the PURC, for instance. Yeah. The PURC, um, as you do know, directed the electricity company of Ghana to come up with a comprehensive report on what exactly the situation is and um, so that the PRC can take you know, a more informed decision as to what the way forward is. So they've, so they've actually um, you know, delivered that um, or submitted that report to the PURC they were asked about they, five. They, they did three out of five. They did three out of five. Mm. They left out the, the load shedding yes. um, issue. Now, again, the PURC then has to take a decision. Have you been impressed so far with the way the PURC has gone about its work? I mean, 
this thing has been lingering for a very long time. It's been happening with us for a very long time. It's just on the 19th of March that the PURC actually asked the ECG to come apart. Do you agree with those who also say that the PURC should go beyond the ECG and also ask Gridco the same, that Gridco, what's happening with um, your transmission of power to ECG? I mean, where, where do you stand on this? Why just P, uh, Gridco? Why not to the power plants? Right. That produce power as well. Right. Because if you, 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 we, there are three stages. There's the production, there's the transmission by Gridco, and then there's ECG distribution. Well, distribution. So why stop at Gridco? I see. Actually, the problem is at the production. Right. So if you go to Gridco and say we don't have the power, then you have to go to the uh, uh, production people and say, why haven't you given them the power? Right. And they will tell you, I don't have them. We haven't got the money to fuel the plant. So mm -hmm. when they pay us, mm -hmm. we'll, we, we'll deal with it. Okay. So why stop at Gridco? Mm. If we go straight to the power producers, we'll get the answers we want. Okay. They, can, they will be diplomatic about it, but they will tell you that this is how much we are giving. This is what we can give, but we're only giving this because this is what we have, or we are not giving at all. Right. That, and then you, you'll get your answer there, black and white. Mm. No, no, no problems. Right. You, so far, I'm, I'm clear in my mind that the request that it should go further mm -hmm. to P, uh, beyond, the P, uh, beyond the ECG. It's a fair call. It's a fair call. Go and ask Gridco. But don't stop there. Go and ask the power suppliers. What's happening? Why haven't you been able to give power? Because according to our books, if you were all on production, you will have more than we need. In fact, too much. Not too much because you must always have reserve. But in terms of peak time, you're looking at 3,700. And we should have anything up to about 4,500 in the bag. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't have a problem. Mm. Even if you want to take account of issues that are going on, take off another 200, you're still good to go. Right. So what is the problem? Mm. And they'll tell you that we can only, we are only being given enough to run 3,300 because we don't have the money to buy the fuel, mm. period. That's it. Wow, that's, that's quite interesting. And so I guess that would end the conversation on um, ECG and uh, matters arising. And maybe I need to ask about the... Um, the calls for, because we've heard the Ghana Medical Association, for instance, asking for a load shedding timetable because it's actually affecting their work at the hospitals. And you mentioned the issue about uh, Tama General Hospital. I don't know what you make of it because you have a situation where the Tama General Hospital is saying that we, they are not aware of any woman giving birth and losing a baby. Um, and yet we saw um, a sister station TV3 interview a woman who was actually complaining that she's lost her baby. She was actually crying. I don't know what you make of that spectacle. It was a sad one, isn't it? If you, you let me turn it on its head. Right. Why should the opportunity get, even if it's fake news, mm -hmm. why should you create an opportunity for fake news? Okay. If there was power, would somebody come up with this story? If there was power in Tema General Hospital, would somebody come out with this story? Mm. We saw the photographs of. Uh, the children in the mm -hmm. incubators, etc., on yeah. live on telly. True. So, are we saying that is also false? Look, we know that there's outages. So, the bottom line is, are they or are they not? And you have said, you are not saying there are no outages. You are saying that the degree and the reason for the outages are different. Right. But we are telling you that that cannot be the case because mm -hmm. it's everywhere. Okay. Did you see the clip where in Kumasi, almost every shop on the road, they okay. had generators right. by, by the shop doors right. as, so that they could, con, could sell their wares. Mm. All these small portable generators. Because they do, they, even Accra that we are complaining, is worse outside in the rural right. areas. Okay. It is much worse. The outages are worse than what we are seeing in, 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 in Accra. Mm. And Accra, we are still crying. So, look, I have, I'm trying to be as charitable as possible. Uh, diplomatic, diplomatic in my language. Diplomatic in your language. Okay. Because it, it is an anger matter. Mm. People should show anger in yeah. this issue. Oh, we are not... Just give us a timetable. That's it. That is all. Put the politics aside. What, what is this? What is this? Well, they're hoping you wouldn't use it against them. Anyway, um, let's, let's do this. Let me... In fact, for the first time, we're going to be doing something on Inside Pages. We're going to be inviting our audience who are watching us to call us and tell us. Um, and it's going to be not a regular, but it's going to be one of the features of the show now where, depending on the topic and the discussion, would we'll ask you to phone in and tell us what you make of it or share some experiences. So 
today, um, I have actually been directed my my lead producer Derek uh, Derek um, to uh, to pick your calls. It's zero two four five eight three four nine eight zero zero two four five eight three four nine eight zero. Derek will put it up on the screen, but it's zero two four five eight three four nine eight zero. Call us and let us know what the park situation in your area is. Um, ECG has just told us that they have fixed whatever problems exist within the power sector, and so you shouldn't, you shouldn't be having any problems. If you do have a problem, then it's a localized fault, which has been with us since the days of um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. But now, um, no more you know, intermittent power outages. It's not the same experiences that you have. Is there... 0245 I'm told I have a caller now. Good morning. Is what, Zach? Yeah, good morning, my brother. Good morning. I'm told I have hey. Zach on the line. Good morning, Zach. Yeah. Zach, thanks for joining us. Oh, okay. I'm told I have Musa on the line. Musa, good morning. Yeah, good morning, my brother. Yes. What's the, yeah. what's the past situation in your area? It's very terrible, my brother. Very, very terrible. What, what do you mean by it's terrible? Explain, no. please. The reason I'm saying it's terrible is that uh, you will be around by, in, uh, by 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in, in the evening. The lights will go off and come at 3 o'clock. When it comes at 3 o'clock in the morning, you will be there, you will be there to go off again and come around 11. No proper planning. You can't plan with this. We are requesting for a simple uh, timetable. And the minister thought that is to tell that uh, we should go and produce our own title. After using my money to buy my own credit, it's not that you are giving it for free. And could remember when the uh, MD of SDC said that uh, we are, yeah, it's not a privilege that we should give this, uh, it's not a right, but it's a privilege that we have it. After buying my, using my money to buy my own credit, is that the and reward? Musa, reward Musa, uh, Musa, I need you to do two things for me. First of all, yes, uh, where are you calling us from? And please speak up because I, we can hardly hear you. I'm calling from Niboy Town. Niboy Town, okay. Yes, I'm La the Paz, chief Niboy of Niboy Town. Okay. And I'm speaking as an opinion leader. I'm not speaking as an ordinary person. Are okay. Yes. But Musa, how long has this situation existed and persisted? Oh, almost about uh, 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 three, four months now. Four months now? Three, four months, yes. This is what we are going through. And the times that he goes over, the time he comes back has been consistent. It can be consistent. Wow. It's been consistent. Please. Okay. All right, Musa, thank you very thank much you for very calling much. us. Thank so um, we're picking some calls. Um, this is Inside Pages. Inside Pages today is um, asking you to call us and share with us your experiences with the power outages. And we're doing this because the ECG has told us that it fixed the problem. There's no more power, intermittent power outages. And so we want to find out from you whether you are experiencing the same. Jerry from Accra has called us. Jerry, where exactly in Accra are you calling us from? I'm calling from Tessano. Tessano, okay. Yes. What's the situation there, uh, Jerry? I want to speak to... Uh, uh, yes, I'm calling from Tessano. Okay. Jerry... You know, for all this while... Please speak, please speak up a bit, Jerry. Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Please go ahead. Yeah, for all this while, people have been crying over this thing. I know there are places where... I know there are places where this problem, problem are persisting. Okay. Um, Jerry, when you call us... Um, Jerry, can you hear me? Okay, so Jerry's uh, call has actually dropped, but let me just do this. When you call us, please um, turn down the volume of your set. Otherwise, it gives us a very terrible feedback. So just reduce the volume on your TV set and talk to us. Otherwise, you know, we struggle to hear what you're saying. So it's 0245 uh, 0245-834-980. Inside Pages this morning is having a conversation about the power situation. The ECG has said that it has fixed the problem and so you shouldn't be having 
um, the erratic power uh, situation that we've been experiencing for some time now. Um, but I want to find out from you whether that's the case. So who, who else will have on the line next? Um, no, I don't know. Good morning. So we are not with, we are not with uh, this, uh, this, uh, with, with this. We are with Dipko, but still, the light of a big day. At times, we come off six o'clock and come the following day nine. Yes, wh who am I speaking with, sir? We are speaking with Bad, back from uh, from the uh, company constituency, Upper East. Sorry. Company constituency, Upper East region. Oh, you are calling from Upper East region. Yeah. Tim Timpani. Yeah. And the name again, Bash. Bash. Pat. Yes. Okay, that's in Patrick. Patu. All right, Pat, please go ahead, sir. So the the last of is too much. It will come at times, we'll go off 6 p.m. and then come the following day, 11 at time 9. So it is very serious. And Pat, it's been like that for how long? Hello, Pat, can you hear me? Okay. So I think that the call has dropped. So 0245834, we'll just take two more calls. 0245834980. You can see it on the screen. Please call us and let us know whether you have electricity or you don't have electricity. What's the electricity situation in your area? ECG says it has, to, it has fixed the problem. Let's know whether your problem has been fixed as well. Um, call us. Tell us where you're calling, you're calling from. And then turn down the volume on your TV set. Yes. Good morning. Is that Henry? Yes. Okay, Harry, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Adeso. Adeso, wonderful. Yes. Please, please go ahead, yeah. sir. Yeah, there is a problem at Adeso. You see, the, the, the light off is too much. There was uh, yesterday, uh, rain, small rainfall yesterday. So around 5.30 to 6 o'clock, there was a light off in Adeso up to now. There, there is no light in Adeso. Right now, I'm speaking to you. Wow. And it's been like that for, for how long, sir? For, for, for about, about let, let, let me take it, about a, a month ago. Wow. They, they, they will just, that light will go off. There's more time they will switch to it. Or there's the, the whole lot of night, there, there is no light. Do you have lights this morning? No, 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 no up to now. You don't? As, as, as I'm speaking to you right now, there's no light in Adeso. Since yesterday night. The whole of Adeso? Yes. Wow. So, so I don't know how you feel about ECG saying that he has fixed no, the it's problem. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very sad because, you know, Addis is a small village, Upper West Achim District, and I stand there. Okay. If you, if you can find it yourself, you will know what I'm saying. So, I'm wondering, how are you watching the program this morning if you don't have light? No, Unless I, love, I, love, I love there this morning to my work at Tama. Okay. So I just call one of my brother. Right now, I call my brother that, 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 that is, his phone is not going on. So I call my sister, and my sister was complaining about the light of six yesterday. Okay. Because I left there, I left there this uh, dawn around 4.30 to 5 o'clock right. to Tama, my workplace. I'm right. working at Tama right now. Sorry, sorry about that. We, uh, we, we, we sympathize and empathize with you. Thank you very much. I will take one more caller and then we would um, end the phone in surgery and, and move into the developments from the judiciary, from the court, a court. I'm talking about the Supreme Court. So we'll take one last call. I'm told zero two. Um, let me again, um, please put up the line again on, on the screen. It's, um, oh, Bernard. Good. Now, Bernard is our final call, I believe. Bernard, good morning. Where are you calling us from? Good morning, sir. Really, I'm, I'm calling from Kwabenya. Kwabenya, wonderful. Bernard, thank you very much for joining mm -hmm. us. So what's, yeah, what's the situation in your area? ECG says it has fixed the problem. Has your problem been fixed? No, please. It has not been fixed. So you don't have electricity this morning as we are talking? We have, we have, we have light. That's you have thing. light this morning? Yes, we have light. Okay. But the problem is, the problem I have is how politically are we solving this issue? How politically are we solving this issue? Right. That's my problem. Right. Mm. Because you, you see, this is a, it's a problem that has been haunting us for years. Mm. The problem that has been haunting us for years. So, what measures are we putting in place as a political parties, both MPP and NDC? Uh, what are we doing to solve this problem? Right. And this normally happens getting to the end of, of the year, when we are, uh, uh, sorry, in the election year. This is when all this will happen. So, who is behind this? And what is happening after all? That this has, has been 
hunting us for all these years. It hunted Kufo, it hunted Mahama, and it is still hunting us in the Kufo now. Right. Why? What is the cause? Okay. And what solution? What measures are we putting in place to solve it? All Not right. is it going to be back and forth, back and forth like this? The, and this man over there, uh, sorry, I don't know whether he's in this place now, but mm. the man over there was complaining about that it has killed people, those people in uh, incubators. When did this, this thing happen? I think okay. just this year. NBC's own took us, I think, four years. Then that means it killed a lot of people by then. It killed a lot of people by then. If it is killing people by now, then it killed most people, a lot of people by then. Mm. It is very sad. So are you going to continue with this? Back and forth, somebody gain, uh, gaining political power after this crisis. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be going to the Supreme Court um, to understand why the Supreme Court decided to grant a request by the Attorney General for an expedited action on an injunction application which was brought before it by a certain member of parliament for North, uh, that South Dai, uh, the Honorable. Um, Rock Singh Eche Dapiamakbo. I will try to understand that. And whether the Attorney General did anything wrong by not informing the other party, I'm talking about uh, Dapiamakbo's lawyer, that this is a request it was actually asking of the, um, the Chief Justice so that they can prepare and uh, go to court and fight it or otherwise. And uh, we will get into that conversation after this break. <laughs> that he said he had come to my office and somebody at the front desk had told me expressly that I have said no process in respect of that particular case should be received. So you see, he didn't know that we had a CCTV system in our office that even has an audio capacity. And so we have them on the CCTV recording. What he actually did was he came in, said he was the bailiff of the court, then removed the process. And the front desk lady saw my name on it and said, oh, I am not in the office, so can you wait and let my boss come and sign for the process? He said he was calling his boss to check whether that would be appropriate. Thanks. And after he exited, that he was making a call, in fact, he told me, oh, I'm making a call, I'll be right back. He right. Said, yes. And we have it all on the CCTV. Okay. Clearly, it is a very big lie for him to say that this was what happened, that he came in and we were literally resisted. He hasn't indicated to me that he received All right, welcome back. We uh, sincerely apologize for that. Um, we were playing Nick Bakul Samwadu, who is a lawyer for the Honorable Nelson Dafia Makpo. And yet we have the PURC and the ECG logo there. It was just a bit of a, it was a little mix up was due to some technical uh, challenge. So we, um, we sincerely apologize because that can get a little confusing. You're wondering who is doing the talking. But anyway, so I did indicate um, uh, before we went on break that we're going go to go to the Supreme Court. But before we do that, the Honorable Alex uh, Segbefia wants to just say something briefly before we go to the Supreme Court. Genius to the NDC okay. government. Right. We had doom so, hmm. yes. Uh, it's not Kufo had it, we had it, MPP had it. Right. The difference is that we acknowledged we had it and we put out a timetable. Right. At least people could plan their lives in the difficulty that existed. Mm -hmm. That is not happening now. And that is the difference. Right. Let us be clear about that. And bearing in mind the history in which the MPP used it as a political tool, right. you would have thought that coming into government and having had excess power, they would never have taken us back into doom so. Here we are again. Why should we keep them? Right. Not at all. Okay. That clarity must be made, I mean, in, 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 in your estimation. Yes. So we now go to the Supreme Court, and something very interesting happened in the course of this week, where the Supreme Court actually dismissed an application which was brought before it by the Member of Parliament for the South Dai, uh, that's uh, the Honorable Roxon Nelson Dapia uh, challenging the approval of the ministerial and deputy ministerial nominees in a unanimous decision, um, the five-member panel of the court, um, chaired by the Chief Justice herself, held that his application was frivolous and an abuse of court processes. 
Now, the applicant, Roxy Nelson Defemoko, had sought to halt the vetting process in Parliament pending the determination of his suits challenging the constitutionality of the President's decision to reassign ministers without Parliament's um, involvement. But before this case was heard, the Chief, so actually the Attorney General, um, actually wrote to the Chief Justice, right? He wrote a letter to the Chief Justice requesting of the Chief Justice to rush the hearing of the case. Because remember that the case had not, a date had not been scheduled or settled for the hearing. So he said, this particular issue, I want you to hear it quickly because of some reasons were yet, I haven't come across that letter. That letter has not been made public yet, but he gave reasons to uh, the Chief Justice according to the Attorney General. And the Chief Justice thought that the reasons he gave um, was, were sound. And so the Chief Justice decided to grant him and that hearing. And so the case was heard on, on Thursday. And the Chief Justice herself chaired the five-member panel and, um, again, uh, ruled that, um, you know, what uh, the firm of God was seeking to do was, was an abuse of the court processes and also was frivolous. And so what it means is that um, parliaments can go ahead and do its work. Now, to put all of this in perspective, let me bring in the Honorable, um, uh, Honorable uh, Alex Segwefi. I remember he's also a private legal practitioner to tell us what he makes of what has happened. But before then, can we listen to the interview that uh, we had with Nick Baku Samwado, who is a lawyer for Nelson, uh, Roxy Nelson de Firma, but to tell us what actually happened when bailiffs went to his office to, um, to serve him with court processes. Two things. Um, he was supposed to have served him with a hearing notice that the hearing was actually going to take place on, Wednesday, on, on Thursday, um, and also to um, serve him with the uh, I'm told there was another injunction application or so by the Attorney General. I'm not too clear what, but there was actually a hearing notice which was supposed to be served him, but he uh, apparently wasn't in the office, and so um, the bailiffs actually dropped the thing on the table. But the bailiffs told a different story to, um, uh, to the court and actually swore under an oath, but told something different to um, the chief judge. In fact, the court, let me see the, the panel. So what he said and what Nick Waku Asamwado is saying are two different things. But first of all, I want to take the views of um, the Honorable um, uh, um, uh, Alex Sebefia or when he makes up what, has hap or what happened on Thursday, whether he wanted one of those who think things that it was actually a travesty of justice. All right, so you're a lawyer, mm -hmm. um, and, and you're a lawyer in good standing. You've been doing this. You've been practicing for, for a very long time. What do you make of what happened as far as the Supreme Court's ruling was concerned? Well, first and foremost, I don't think the Supreme Court has done anything unlawful. Right. Uh, they've acted in a way which has raised concerns. Mm. But in terms of law... Right. They've no, not heard. No. But it leaves a bitter taste in the mouth of many who are observers. Okay. And you should understand that the Supreme Court, whether it likes it or not, in any government is always under scrutiny with the way in which it, it, uh, it does its work. Does its work in relation to the executive, right? And increasingly, this the the current Supreme Court is being seen to be, and I'm not saying that they are, but it's being seen to be not looking at or dealing with issues in a way and manner which cause some concern. Right. More so than perhaps in the past. Mm. And the, the, the reason why that is coming is simply because one would have thought that in a case or in cases which have similar uh, issues mm -hmm. where there are both two injunctions, mm -hmm. um, the first in time would have been heard. And the first in time is actually quite a serious matter. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of weight, mm -hmm. 
the ability to stop someone from swearing in ministers, and then the ability to question or not even receive a document or mm -hmm. question uh, the president's decision mm -hmm. on a matter from the legislature. Then when you look at it in that light, mm -hmm. some will say that the issue of the legislature is actually more important. Okay, tell me more. Why? Because we have lived in this country under the Kufu administration. But before you go ahead, sir, let me yes. do this. Um, I'm actually told that um, I am the Honorable, not Honorable, but um, Counsel, um, Isaac Welberforce. He's also okay. joined us via Zoom. I think at least it would be fair for me to welcome him so that okay. the viewers know that he's on. So, um, Isaac Welberforce, Mensa, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us on Inside Pages. It's a pleasure having you, sir. Good morning. I, I hope I'm, I'm loud and clear. You're very loud and very clear. Now, he is the spokesperson for the uh, Ministry of uh, Ministry of Justice. So that's the ministry that the, uh, I'm talking about the ministry in the middle of all of it. He's a spokesperson for uh, that particular ministry so that um, he would set the record straight and seek to clarify some of the issues that have come up. So, yes, please go ahead, sir. Under the Kufu administration, mm -hmm. there was a minister, I believe, uh, the Roads Minister Anani. Right. A case was brought against him, and so he had to leave the ministry, or he was asked right. to leave the ministry. Right. He was not replaced. A caretaker minister was put in there, okay. and this went on for over a year. Right. So the placement of ministers mm -hmm. cannot be more important <laughs> than when you have a legislature bringing a whole matter right. to a president mm -hmm. where there's a serious constitutional matter that has to be dealt with. Right. And the injunction or should not be heard whether mm -hmm. or not the president's hand can be stayed or not. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, is more telling. It is more poignant a matter to be dealt with expeditiously because you have the two major arms of government or two of the major arms of government, the judiciary is the third. But you have the executive and you have the legislature. Mm. And for once, I believe I have not, and it might be the case, but let me just say that this is a case in which the speaker and all his 200 and something odd parliamentarians are on all fours. True. There's no discrepancy in parliament, whether you are MPP or NDC. They've all decided this is what we unanimous want. Unanimous so, decision. Unanimous decision by them. So it then is a direct conflict of legislature against president. executive. So for me, an injunction in such a case is more poignant. And I'm not going to the merits mm. of the case. No. Yes, because it's in court. The, the, it's more poignant okay. and therefore should have been expedited. Right. Now, some will say that, ah, well, there was no application before the court. That is correct. Mm. But the court sets dates. True. And therefore, if you have a case which is linked, nothing stops the court from acting on its own volition. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because this is the Supreme Court. Look, there are two ways of bringing a matter of this nature. You have had a motion for abridgment of time, mm -hmm. which didn't occur in this case. Exactly, because there's no time set. So you had to write a letter. A letter was written yes. to ask for this to be explained. The rules are that if you write a letter for such a thing, you should copy the other side. Is it compulsory? Is it mandatory? Yes. You don't, it's not an ex parte application. You're asking. It's not an ex parte application. The matter is known to all parties. So you, you let all sides be aware. The Attorney General says, no, it is the, it is the duty of the court to notify the other party, not his duty. Well, it would that, have been nice. That it is, would have been a, it would have been gentle. That it would his, have been sweet for him to have done that professionally. That, that but if I don't view. do it, there's nothing legally wrong about so it. So if it's the duty of the court and he hasn't done it, and the court does it in a very quick manner, yes, on the it, same day, does that it, the day going to be heard. Doesn't it then give credence to this perception? That's something on top of that. Something. Is, yes. You, look, I, the first statement I made was that it's not unlawful. But what message are you sending out there? Okay, so it's not just about the law. It's also about the optics. Exactly. And I'm telling you that the optics at the moment are not good. 
Mm. So you do things that don't worsen it. Right. Why? It's a simple matter. You are going to make an application for abridgment of time. Or not abridgment of time, but the effect is the same. Your, a, a request to change, to bring the date yes. quicker. Why don't you want the other side to know? Why won't you tell them? Uh, what, what's the issue? So you do it. I'm aware that now there's also been a request for the other matter. Yes, the speaker. To, 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 the, yes, same. It's same, 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 same. But it didn't have, my humble opinion, and I stand to be corrected, it didn't have to wait. It didn't have, because the court who is seized of the matters will know that, look, if I'm dealing with this matter and this, I can, I have an inherent right to say, I want to hear this case But the Supreme immediately. Court has loads of cases it's looking at. If you have brought your case before the Supreme Court, yes. and you're not following up on it, you're not asking for, you know, like the Attorney General said, he says, I am interested in protecting the, my colleague uh, uh, ministers who, by virtue of this application injunction, cannot, cannot be he, granted, but cannot I'm, be I heard on a different, so That's why I'm following up. On a different radio station, he said he didn't do it for the other side because they, were not, they are not the plaintiffs. But he's not the plaintiff in this as well. No, he said he's the attorney general for the government. Yes, but he's not a plaintiff. He's a defendant, or he's, he's no, he's he's a plaintiff. What? Sorry, he's a defendant because he's been he's been he's respondent. Been, um, he's a respondent. Yes, so he's look, a respondent. Yes. Look, look but the point he's making is that I am the lawyer for the executive. Yes. These are my colleague ministers. They are look, in trouble. I need to go and save them. I need to go and rescue them. If you figure that a battle between the president, yes. And the legislature yes. is second to this matter. Then I rest my case. That's in his estimation. Uh, and that is unfortunate. That's my view. No, he says you, it's affecting it, 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 look, the work of government. Both the government machinery. Why? What is happening is not a work affecting the work of government. He doesn't think so. So that is his view. Yes. So I'm entitled to mine. Absolutely. And I'm saying that many agree with me that this matter should be have been expedited even by the court itself. Right. Because they have an inherent jurisdiction. True. They said this. True. The colleague has said, this matter is so important. I want it heard now. But write to the parties and let them come and deal with it because it's that important. But yes, they will go back and it's, it's, this is what we call legal issue. So okay, you haven't written to us formally. So as a result, till somebody writes to us, we are not obliged to act. Good luck. Isaac, Honorable uh, well, well, Council, good morning. It's good to have you again. Um, so you work at the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General Department as the PRO of the ministry. Now, the, the Attorney General has come under some flag, some heavy criticisms for deciding not to copy the other party, his letter to the Chief Justice, informing the Chief Justice that he wants an expedition. He wants an expedited action on that appli uh, injunction application, which has brought, which been brought before, before uh, the Honorable Roxanne Nelson de Fiamakwa. Why did the Attorney General decide to do this on their blind side up until the day of the hearing? What is the Attorney General hiding? Why did he do that if he really meant well? So it's absolutely, well, once again, good morning to you and uh, good morning to your numerous viewers all across the globe. And also, you seem to have asked all the right questions. And uh, that is, uh, I wouldn't expect any less from your, your good self based on your experience and your research that you've already done into the matter. So there's nothing, absolutely nothing, that the Office of the Attorney General is hiding. So uh, I had honorable... Alex Segrefia, who I respect very much, and um, especially today, especially today, he's earned even more respect for me when he says expressly and explicitly so that um, legally, absolutely nothing wrong has been done. But but then going down down the line, he also suggests that there are some rules that have been broken, and that's um, the point where we differ no rule has been broken. Maybe if Honorable would uh, point out to any specific rule in maybe CI 16 or CI 47 that has been broken, where the Attorney General was supposed to have necessarily copied according to our rules, because our rules are law. 
our rules form part of the law. So if we are saying that legally nothing bad has happened or nothing onto what has been done, then it means that when it comes to the aspect of rules as well, same has also been satisfied. Okay, so that being said, there's no rule that mandates the attorney general or any party to a matter. So now I'm removing the attorney general for purposes of legal education for the general public. I'm removing the attorney general from this equation to say that any party to a matter at the Court of Appeal, at the Supreme Court, can actually write to the, 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 the Chief Justice for such, you know, for such a matter to be heard, for any matter. You state your reasons and then you pray that the matter be heard early. So there's no rule existing in any book that says that you are supposed to copy the other side, the party on the other side. What you're supposed to do is that you're supposed, you, you, can, write, you can write to the, the Chief Justice, and remember that under Article 1254 of the 1992 Constitution, the Chief Just, Justice is not only playing a supervisory role for the judiciary, the Chief Justice also plays an administrative role. So writing a letter to the Chief Justice in her administrative capacity is not in any way interfering with judicial process or any sort of rule that has been broken. So that's what, that is actually what the Office of the Attorney General did, or the Attorney General, that's what he did. He wrote to the Chief Justice and sought an earlier date and um, what, what also follows, or corollary to that process, what happens is that the court will then issue hearing notice to the parties to appear. And that's exactly what happened, Mr. Moore. Now, again, you, 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 have, you know, apart from the fact that you're a lawyer, but the fact that you're the PRO for the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General's Department, you also have been in the media. Spokesperson. Not spokesperson, PRO. sorry, the That's spokesperson. Possible. Yes, you've also been within the media, um, the media space. You're Ghanaian as well. You, you watch your, 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 your watch of the space. Now, like Alex Abafia has said, there are two injunctions before the courts. Now, all of these raise constitutional issues, right? One came on a certain date, and then two weeks later, the other one was also filed. Now, if you have a situation where the one which was filed earlier is yet to be heard, but the ones that was filed later, do you have the attorney general pushing for that to be heard? When in the estimation or in the view of some Ghanaians, in fact, the matter that bothers on the Richard Sky suit is actually even weightier than this one. Won't you expect, naturally, that the, the Attorney General would be saying that, well, even though I have the right under the Constitution or guaranteed under the Constitution to request for an early date for this to be heard, I must also be mindful of public opinion and public perception because then that creates a certain impression that I am more interested in protecting or pushing the interest of my colleagues whose approval is in limbo than pushing for the matter about the LGBTQ+, which is before the Supreme Court, which a date is even yet to be uh, settled or set on. And, and, and how, I mean, the optics of it, how, how will people think about me? Even to the extent of writing, uh -huh. when, he was, when, he was, when he was making that request, he decided not to... Not to copy um, the, the party on the other side, which is well within his right. There's nothing legally wrong. It is not a judicial process. It's purely administrative. But this is political. Wouldn't you have expected naturally that the Attorney General would be considering all of these in, in making this move so that you know, we don't create all these suspicions and perceptions and, and so on and so forth? Oh, unfortunately, how our court system works, especially at the level of the Supreme Court, which is the apex court of the land, is not first come, first serve sort of arrangement. It's okay. who is more serious about their, their matter before the justices of the Supreme Court. So the Attorney General does not, for instance, have the, the, the liberty of, um, let's say, public opin opinion over law or public opinion over what is absolutely necessary not to say the other matters are not necessary but as we have established earlier which fortunately uh, honorable alex segrefia also agrees that any party to the matter 
can make such an application. If we are talking about first come, first serve, I have a matter at the Supreme Court as far back as 2021. So maybe mine should have even been heard earlier than uh, Roxanne's or even um, Richard Sky's matter. But, you know, not to say that I'm not serious, but plaintiffs or applicants in any matter before the courts may have various reasons why they haven't pushed the matter for forward. So any party to the matter, whether you're a plaintiff or a defendant, you can make such an application for the matter to be brought forward. Like you have said, uh, you have done your research, I can tell. There was no original date given, which is the norm. The fact that an original date has not been given, so let's just clear that communication, which has been put out there by some persons, that why was there not a date given when they filed the motion? That's what happens at the Court of Appeal and at the Supreme Court. So then, subsequent to that, you, that you have taken your case to court, you need to push the matter. If you haven't pushed the matter, any party to the case can push the matter. And if, if there, there are several constitutional matters, even on the day that we were in court, we had a gentleman who came with, um, he said he was, he was going to represent himself in court. I'm sure your media men were there, said he was going to represent himself, had a constitutional issue, called it an appeal and came under article 2 one of the constitution all those confusing things which were very very off but because the court is fair and just the court did indeed give him hearing so so there are there are thousands probably hundreds of thousands of constitutional matters in the court and the attorney general cannot simply say that all constitutional matters simply because they are constitutional matters let let me write to the chief justice to have this matter expedited now this is not the case as in the richard anani case as Honorable has cited where you have mentioned one minister. This is a case where several ministers, this is about probably over 80, about 80% 80 of the ministers are, are being uh, held in limbo or they are, their approvals are in limbo because of this injunction application. So if the attorney general feels like, so this is quite bad, this is quite a serious situation. Okay. And once again, not to say it's more serious than the LGBTQ matter in court, but the LGBTQ has parties involved. It has the Richard Delasca himself, it has parliament, and it has uh, the attorney general. So since it has parliament, and you're saying or you're suggesting that there's a rift between the legislature and the executive, maybe the legislature should push that case forward as well. And fortunately, the legislature have taken a step to indeed move the case forward. Right. Um, yeah, just finally, if you can do this briefly, um, the matter of the timing of the serving of the hearing uh, uh, notice, um, which was done on the D-Day, the bailiff called bailiff went there, there was nobody there to receive it, and uh, he had to drop it on the table as he left. I mean, I'm talking about what he told the court. We've heard Nick Bako Samwado sing a different story. I don't know whether you have any quick thoughts on that before we, you can take leave of us. Well, as to what happened, I think that would be between the bailiff and um, the proof that Neil Paco says he has, which I thought would have gone, the video which I thought would have gone viral by now. Um, so the proof he says he has, and actually whether indeed the, the person, the bailiff, perjured himself when he made those statements in court. So if there's a direct discrepancy, I'm sure parties in the matter, anybody concerned will know how to make such an application. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Isaac Wilberforce. I, I want to... You want to ask him a question? I want clarification, clarification. on that okay. point. So Isaac, um, Honourable wants to ask a question. Yeah, you know, like when you honorable. don't know the other parties in a case, right. we normally do ex parte applications. True. Convention and good ethics means that when all parties are known in a case, mm. anything you file, you let the other side know. Right. So if it is the case... And that's why I said it's not unlawful. Mm. But it is not good ethical behavior, or right. for that matter, it is not good practice not to let the other side know. So I don't, that's why I started by saying it's not unlawful, but actually mm. it is not good legal practice. Right. You know your opponent, you know you're going to make this application. Any document you file, serve the other side. Right. We do it every day. Right. And that is the point I wanted to, when he made, right. yes, I agree. It's not unlawful, right? but I don't think it was good practice. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, um, Isaac. And uh, you have um, a, a great day, sir. Thank you very much, Moro. All right. That's Isaac Wilberforce Mansa. It's, it's a spokesperson for the...
Office of the Attorney General and the Ministry of Justice. Um, so I'll just take five minutes of uh, Honorable's time to. So the Speaker has written to. Uh, he's written to the Chief Justice yes. and requesting for a similar thing. I mean, yes. what are we what are we looking forward to? Well, let's wait and see. Mm. I I am clear in my mind that um, with the 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 issue of there are three major arms of government. Yeah. Media is the fourth realm. Yeah, right. But we know we have the... You call, it, you call us a fourth, fourth estate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you have the judiciary right. who oversees and interprets everything for us. But you have the executives and the legislature, both of whom are elected officials in, in, in terms of the top. Yeah. So when you have a situation where the two don't agree, nothing could be more important, right. as far as I'm concerned, in terms of importance... So I would have thought, notwithstanding everything my colleague has said, that, look, the Attorney General should have expedited this matter as well, mm. straight away. He says those who are interested should do that. That's what he said. Fine. So he, he is a party to that other case. So in effect, when we say that he doesn't see it as important, we are right. Yeah. Because he had that opportunity as well. Yeah. And that, for some of us, is, is of concern. And the optics are not good. All right. Okay. So uh, that's the Honorable Alex Agrafi. I want to thank you very much uh, for his time. So this is where we end today's edition of um, Inside Pages. Let me just quickly do this. I've got tons of your messages. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to read all your messages. But Koku um, Mauli Nanegba, he sends a message. He says, Moro. In the stricter sense of separation of power, should the executive secretary or the president write a letter to the legislature asking it not to transmit a letter? Has the executive arm that power? That aside, can anyone or process stop the president from conducting his or her constitutional mandate? In the instant case, the constitution has provided an, an, in Article 10678 what the president must do. But to write to state, don't transmit the letter, is offensive and an affront to democracy. Now, when you read the Attorney General's letter to the president, he didn't say don't, don't, um, okay, you're talking about the letter to uh, the executive secretary's letter to, to parliament. I think that's what Danny is talking about. Yes, 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 that I agree. Yes, I get that. Um, in this instant case, the constitution has provided under blah, 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 what the president has, has to do, but to write to the state, to write to states, don't transmit the letter, is offensive and an affront to the democracy um, or to democracy. I fear and think. The way things are going, one day a president or his executive secretary is going to write a letter to the CJ, blatantly refusing to comply with the Supreme Court order. The democracy must be about regard and respect for each organ or arm of government. That's Koku Mauli Nanegba. Now, this one here says, good morning, Mr. Moro. My name is Dari from Daria, I believe, from Tamale. Please extend my greetings to Mr. Alex Awefi. I think Honorable Napo's statement is very unfortunate and is only a characteristic of an incompetent energy minister belonging to a clueless um, a party which is about to exit power. My appeal to all Ghanaian voters is that they should vote the NDC come December 7 as part of the responsibility of building the Ghana we want. Thanks. Um, that's from, uh, he's called uh, Dairi from Tamale. And finally, this one here from a champa who says, Good morning, Mr. Moro. I think the Wilbur First guy has done justice to the topic. The NDC's noise is much ado about nothing. They are hell bent on insisting that the Chief Justice is biased, but the Chief Justice is not biased. Hardy from Pick Farm, if I didn't read this, Hardy would be on my case. Hardy from Pick Farm says the Supreme Court does not represent the interest of the nation, but sovereign will of the president. They should remember power they say belongs to the people. Allah will see the great NDC um, through. That's coming from Hardy in Pick Farm. All right. So thank you very much for watching. It's been, I believe, another successful edition of Inside Pages. Um, I've been hosting the uh, Director of International Relations for the NDC, the Honorable Alexa Wifia, who is also a private legal practitioner who has been with us since the beginning. I also want to say a big thanks to Isaac Wilbur for Spencer, who is the spokesperson for uh, the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General's Department. I also want to say a big, big thanks to Nanambuisi the Seventh, who is the Executive Director of the Institute of Energy uh, Security. And also the Honorable Samuel Atachian, who is the chairperson for the Mines and Energy Committee. He was also a member of parliament for Ibuakwa South. Yes, that's, you don't need to forget that. My name is Ahudumoro, and I brought you, I hosted a show this morning with the help of my hardworking um, um, producer, Derek Adote. Have a good morning and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.